Wow, I think that was a record for the longest time before I got a disconnect. I know they're working on building the line cable line up here to go with the one that they have right now, so maybe maybe it's kicking in and who knows. I probably shouldn't speak, I'll probably get disconnected after three minutes now. But uh now, now, now was I I distracted myself. I'm good at that. Oh, uh, chapter twenty eight, God starts building his nation from scratch. So remember after the red after the tribulation period is gonna start and there's not gonna be any believers on the earth. Now there will be some who humble believers once they you know, rapture and they say, "Oh, you know, they think God was right," and there's just going to be. But, but, but you know, initially it's just right rapture. You know, the end believers because they're all raptured up, and then God starts again the gospel of the kingdom. And so, but it, what's going to end up happening is you're going to have many people aligning themselves with the the Antichrist. Let's look at that. It'll be interesting. Look at the Daniel chapter nine. Sorry, sorry, to the right here. I'm going the wrong way. Daniel chapter nine. It talks about the seven weeks of Daniel. Sixty-nine weeks have already taken place. They're weeks of years. And the sixty-ninth week when uh, Messiah was cut off, when he was crucified. And so the seventieth week, the last seven years, that's the tribulation period. Daniel nine chapter chapter verse seven. That is, and he in the Antichrist. Shall confirm the covenant with me for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall sacrifice and nation to this. So he make, makes the covenant. That's the tribulation period. He makes the covenant with many, many in the name of Israel. But well, what's, what's interesting? Uh, if you go to, uh, you can let go of the line, and now go to Isaiah chapter fifty-three. And this is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that sacrifice delivered Israel from being Satan's lawful captive. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12, and the last verse there of Isaiah chapter 53, it says, Therefore will I divide him in the portion with great, and he shall divide the spoil strong, because he hath poured out his blood to death, and he was nurtured with his gratitude, and he bare the sin of many. And made an intercession for the transgressors. So there, he the sins of many. Uh, now I'll go over to Matthew chapter 20. And we're going to see other similar verse to this. The Lord Jesus Christ is speaking. And really giving them the more to those who have the ears to hear. Uh, to understand this reference to Isaiah chapter 53. He says there in Matthew chapter 20, uh, verse 28. Says, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give, give life a ransom for many. So as it's interesting now, we know under this under the current dispensation, God reveals the, the, the Paul, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't just die for Israel, but rather he was just ran for all. We're told in verse first chapter six at least. <clears throat> So he died for both Jew and Gentile, but under Israel's program it wasn't real. And under Israel's program, it was a ransom for, for men. But what's interesting is what we read in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, is that the Antichrist makes a covenant with many. So, Lord gave many through his death, but also had many aligning themselves with the Antichrist. So, what's going to happen, basically, and what we find in chapter 28 of Isaiah? <clears throat> is that because at first all you have unbelievers and that covenant is made with the Antichrist many of the majority of Israel is going to make a covenant with the Antichrist then it's in the middle of the tribulation period after three and a half years where he sets up the abomination that causes desolation which is the image he causes all men to worship <coughs> if they don't worship him take the mark they won't have food and water. If, if they take the mark, though, they're going to have water and land fire. But they got that and a half years there until they happen from the time they make the covenant to the, the, the time that set up there. The mark of the mark of the image set up. Well, the Israel who made that cut the the Antichrist to decide. If they're going to stay with the Antichrist, or if they're going to break their covenant with him and follow the God Jehovah, and you're going to, have to 
witness out there uh, during the time who are going to be sued for not having signed. So, you know, the, the, the Antichrist is not Christ. The Christ has already come. You're going to have those who are safe through that, the little flock, and they're going to be gone from city to city, as uh, Jesus is told out in Matthew chapter 10, and also Matthew chapter 4, go to, to the all sheep of the house of Israel, go to cities, and they're going to be taking the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what's going to happen is, even you're going to have many who are going to make a covenant with the at the start of the tribulation period, by the time you get to the end of the tribulation period, or by the time you get to halfway through, a lot of them are going to convert and join the little flock, and they're going to trust in the Lord, repent, be baptized, and so then Jesus Christ's death is going to be a ransom for me. It's going to be a ransom for, for them. So it's going to be the greatest time of Jewish version this world has ever seen when they, when they go in the beginning of the tribulation period to the mid trib. And basically, that, that's what the theme of Isaiah chapter 28 is. And you'll see that down in verse 18, especially, where it says, And your covenant with death, so that was the covenant made with the Antichrist, shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall, shall not stand. And the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then ye shall be gone and down. down. So, so, in other words, uh, I guess I should have went back to 16. Verse 16 says, uh, uh, let's go back to 14. It's, <laughs> wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, scorn of men that rules in Jerusalem, so that's apostate Israel. Of verse 15, because he has we have made of an with death, with all are we in agreement. That, 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 uh, the Antichrist, when the overflowing shall, shall pass, which shall not, not come unto us. For we have made life as our refuge, and under falsehood that we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus say the Lord God, Behold, I in Zion, for a foundation, a Stone, a tried stone, a precious stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not be cased. Um, so that's a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is that stone. Each one of those means something different. The tried stone being that he was tempted. Precious meaning no one else like him. him warm stone, stone meaning everything is built on him. A sure foundation. He's, he's steady. He's not like this shifting sand about a like parable talks, talks about. The man who built foolish built his house upon the sand. But the man built his house upon the rock. He built on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not home. And so this is the chance. They made that covenant with Antichrist. Now they have a chance where they can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And and so then, believe. And they're just, and they're, in me, that they repent of their knowledge, repent of their covenant. They will be baptized and washed clean of that. And then they will uh, obey God's commands, and then they'll be so That's why in verse 18, your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Because they have trusted, they have believed in the Lord. That they have believed the gospel given to them, and your hell shall not stand. So that's basically what chapter 28 is about, that conversion there of some of us did reveal. Who is this? In the beginning, they made that, that covenant with the Antichrist, but, but by mid-trip, they've abandoned it, and they've believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They've repented and been baptized to be cleansed of that. There's whom shall he teach not, and whom shall he understand doctrine? The wean from the milk, and John from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. There are for stammer types and other tongues people. So, if you look at there, go over to uh, First Peter. Remember, as I mentioned, this the new believers, because if they weren't new, if they believed before, they would have gone up after. So, these are new believers, and that's why they're in the beginning from the milk. And that's why uh, Peter talks about that in First Peter chapter 2. He mentions this in First Peter chapter 2. Uh, verse 1, Wherefore, for in the sight of all masons and all and hypocrisies, envies, all evil speakings, and those fruit, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And so that's what it's talking about. In Isaiah 28, verse 9, where it says, Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, 
That's the milk of the word. They're new, they're new to this. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ before. And, and now they are they're going to the book of the word and thus they're newborn that's why you have ten precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line it's not some advanced doctrine that they're into they're not they're not a big student they haven't read the bible through a hundred times so they're not big students of the word it's all new to them but they're going to learn they're going to their trust in the lord and because they put their trust in the lord they're going to be uh from the milk of the word, and they're going to be joined as, as as babes, and that's just a reference to when Jesus Christ told Nicodemus in John chapter three says, "A man he must be again in order to enter the kingdom of God," and so they're going to be born again at this point, born as God's people, but not, not uh, just uh, a after John, but after God is of God. They're going to be born and since the new ones, they're going to need the milk of the world to sustain them in order to grow. And the more they grow, then the more likely they're able to withstand a tribulation period and endure until the end. And in this verse 11, we talked about stammering lips in another tongue. Will he speak to this people with stammering lips? Would we refer to his disciples because he's withholding the mystery? King only for those two, two true believers. He didn't allow Pharisees to hear it. And the other tongue, well, that would be Pentecost, where he could speak in other languages because the Jews have been scattered all over the world because of the fifth cycle of chastisement. And they said in other tongues, and so the, the flock are going to have to lift the tongue in order to speak to them in their, their own language so that they can learn the gospel, understand it, and believe, and also grow in the milk of the word they're given. Uh, by the little flock there. So I think that pretty much covers chapter 28. Uh, Chris, there's, there's a lot more there, but we'll, we'll just... Uh, those are the main points. Chapter 29. Chapter 29 is really the apostate nation of Israel will be destroyed. Have no capacity to understand God's word. How many Gentiles not in the millennial king will be saved? So this is moving along. Um, and notice there starts where it says, uh, to Ariel, to Ariel, the sea where the well, well, this is Jerusalem, but it's called uh, Ariel here. And really, the, this is the only time in, in, in version where you will see where it's Ariel. Uh, it's interesting that there, there is a, 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 look at the Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew is, it's, it, in fact, it's translation that the Hebrew is A-R-I-E-L. And so it's not really translated into English. It's just that you're just given the Hebrew here. Uh, but there is a word A-R-I-E-L, same spelling, without the capital uh, over in chapter 23. And that is translated lion-like men. And so, now this is just you know, a case on my part, but it seems like that perhaps the reason God uses the name of Ariel Jerusalem is signifying that they become beasts like the Antichrist. Uh, in the Antichrist is now attached to the relation period, he be beast, uh, and they want under the world wonders for him. And the beast, as far as saying, you know, now they're making sacrifices, these animal sacrifices, is killing, but they're not doing it, 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 it under idolatry, and they're also killing tribulation saints. And so, a reference to apostate, it is just sort of like beast. They're like like they're not even like men. They're sort of just killing men, killing animals. They're just doing all, 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 all these. That's why it says to go to Ariel, the city where David had ye to let them kill sacrifices. So that's what they're doing. They're just killing these friends who are little, little fucking, they're killing animals. Um, it shows how far they are from God as the apostate nation. And uh, they're going to be part of the Antichrist. You know. um, <clears throat> notice verse 9, it talks about how the apostation in our area is drawn with spiritual idolatry. It says, Stay yourselves in wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunk, but not with wine. They stab, but not with strong drink. I've mentioned in before where we've talked about wine. Over in Proverbs, talks about being drunk with wine. 
as it had a reference to the spiritual. Well, you can see that here because it specifically tells you they're drunk, but not with wine. Rather, it's a spiritual thing that they're drunk in the, the uh, spiritual idolatries and, and, the, and the forms of the Antichrist Babylonian religious system. And that's what that's referencing. Um, because they trust in the Lord and God and allow them to with his word. He's concealed it. Just saw there in Isaiah 28 verse 11 from the stammering lips that references to Jesus' parables. And see that in chapter 29 verse 10. It says, For the Lord hath poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep hath closed your eyes that the prince in your rulers the seers hath he heard. Um, so those people who are the prophets, they're false prophets and the rulers, they're apostate rulers that are following God. Uh, and so be because of that they don't have the ears to hear. God's put a deep sleep on them because they've rejected God. They reject God and just conceal the truth from them. Just he says over in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. And you see the verse 11 says, And the vision of all is coming to you as the words of a book that is sealed, which may deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, and he He's, I cannot, but it is, and the book is delivered to him that is not insane. Read this, I pray thee. And he's saying, I am not learning. It's just like, you know, they could read the book of Revelation. They're not going to understand it because they don't have spiritual discernment because they are the apostate and they're not able to see the wisdom of God because they're not in the Lord. Only those who trust in the Lord will have, will God open their eyes to the true God. So we'll be able to see what's going on and not in the tribulation period. I'll see. Let's close here with the last verses. Actually, let's look at verse 18, chapter 29, verse 18. This is a reference to the Gentile to God's word in the millennial king. It says, In that day shall the death hear the word of the book. So that's uh, that would be the, uh, the Gentiles and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Now the eyes of the blind and the and the uh, the deaf usually that's a reference to Israel, but that can't be a reference to them at this point because this is talking about relationship to the sword. And so those who are blind and and uh, and deaf, they're the wicked, they're the lost nation of Israel. And so be destroyed at the end of the tribulation period. <clears throat> With this, the people who are deaf and blind out of the gates, they're really, really in the dark. If you hold your place to the next chapter, chapter 19, <clears throat> Paul makes a rest of this about how, how the Gentiles are in, in the dark under the of the king because they're on the wrong side of the middle of the partition. They're not in that favor nation status that Israel is in. And so he says over there in Acts chapter 17, verse 27. He says that they, they, the Gentile, they should seek the Lord if happily they feel after him and find him, though he be not far from everyone of us. The reason is not to feel for him is because they don't have the light of God. They're being Gentiles. They're not the nation of Israel. They haven't been in the law, and so they have to feel for him, and they have to go by the everlasting gospel. And because he's put that witness of inside them, uh, still they don't have the, of the written word of the Jews did in, in the gospel of the kingdom in that dispensation. And so that's why that's a rest here in Isaiah 20, 29, the deaf and eyes line then would be that that Gentile nations who, uh, not, not Gentile nation, the Gentiles as a whole should be. And at that time, that's when Israel is finally going to fulfill the great commission of the kingdom of priests. He's going to go out the, teach the law to the Gentiles, and so in that day they'll hear the words of the book, and now the blind shall see of obscene and out of the darkness that they're curtain where they have to feel for God. And uh, confirmation that this talk about the Gentiles were the last of the verses there. In chapter 29, verse 22, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, turned in the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, shall his face not wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the Lord work in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understand, and they that murmur shall learn doxy. So you have there the children there of Jacob being those Gentiles who 
uh, accept the gospel and then the opening the ring. So that's that's what we're tonight. I thought that like going out I ended up an hour and a half. There's really a lot of good material in the in the book of Isaiah. A lot of it is and uh, frankly it's under because we don't rightly divide it. I, I call class in it as a Bible college because they didn't rightly divide they just, uh, you know the poor, poor people they just didn't understand what was going on there because they try to apply to themselves to do when it's really like a the nation of Israel. When you look at it in its context, you realize a, a great, great knowledge of it and look about really God's faithfulness to His Word and His justice throughout all of that time. So we'll close there tonight and uh, looks like no one's on here, so I'll just close with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity that we've had to study your word and to just learn more about what you're planning to do in the future and, and the examples of what has happened in the past so that we can use those as examples and samples for us to grow in you and, and to the knowledge of the truth so that we may, we may better walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And for that, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, for joining us tonight, uh, 